Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make brujol. It's a family recipe, and I kind of add a little bit of my own twist to this, so let, let me just get you going on this. We start off with ribeye steaks. These are cut about 3 eighths to a quarter of an inch thick, and then we're going to pound them even thinner. Uh, the easiest way that I find to do that is to lay out some plastic wrap, take my steak, fold over the top of the plastic wrap. This just helps me keep my work surface nice and clean. And I'm going to use my mallet. And I, I've done this in other recipes as well. I'm going to use the flat side. I don't need to use the tenderizing side because ribeyes already have a good amount of fat running through it and we don't really need to tenderize the steak anymore. We just need to get it thin enough so we can stuff it and roll it. So the easiest way to do this is after you put the plastic wrap on top, you're going to want, when you go to hit down on the steak, you're in the same motion of hitting down, you're going to want to pull it towards you. So I'm going to hit, and I'm going to drag that mallet towards me. And instead of moving my mallet around on my cutting board, I'm actually going to rotate what it is I'm pounding. So again, hit it and drag it towards you. So I'm going to do that until I get this spread out about twice the size um, that it starts off as. All right, after our meat has been pounded thin, we can now start to talk about what ingredients we're going to put in here. I like to mix them all together, so we're going to take our onions, which I've thinly sliced. To give you an example, it's probably just under a quarter of an inch uh, sliced the long ways, not the round ways. Uh, peppers are also sliced nice and thin, roughly about uh, a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch. I use one. Uh, yellow onion and one green bell pepper. This is uh, oregano that we grow in our garden here. I've just picked the leaves. These are real small, tender leaves, so I'm not going to chop them up. I'll just drop them right in with the other ingredients. Four cloves of garlic, minced. And I mix everything together, and you'll see why in a little bit. Um, and then this is about 30 dates that I've cut in a quarter. So I've cut them the long ways so you get these really nice long pieces. A lot of recipes will call to use raisins. Um, I think dates just are a little bit sweeter so I, I like to use those instead. I'm also kind of fond of dates. Um, so we'll use those. Uh, again, you can use raisins if you'd like to. And then at this point I'm going to add a touch of oil to this just to help combine everything and give it a little bit more flavor. This is uh, a combination of canola oil and extra virgin oil that I also will saute this whole dish in. Stir this up, incorporate a couple pinches of salt, roughly about a teaspoon. About the same for pepper. And just give this a good mix so everything is well combined. After that we can go ahead and season our beef the ribeyes that we've uh, pounded nice and thin, and we can be ready to assemble everything together. I'm just going to put a nice thin layer of salt on here, and then follow it up by a thin layer of pepper. While I'm doing that, I can go ahead and start to turn on my pan to warm that up. And what we'll do is we'll just let it get to a nice medium-low temperature. We can begin to fill our brujol, and we just want to make sure we get an even mixture of all the ingredients we put in here. So I'm just going to grab a, a little bit of the onions, some of the green peppers, make sure I grab some dates, some of the oregano, some of the garlic. And don't be too scientific in this, just make it look so it looks like there's an even amount. And we're going to go ahead and roll this up now. And as I roll it, I'm going to put a little pressure on the meat so that it, what happens is we can make sure that this stays really, really tight and isn't going to go anywhere when we're done searing it. Now, pounding the meat will do a couple things. One, it's going to make the meat a little tacky so it'll help hold it together. It obviously will make it tender and it'll also make it easier to roll. If you're able to sear it and keep it sealed, that's fine. If you want to use the toothpick method where you insert the toothpick in and then it pops back out, just remember to tell your guests there's a toothpick in what you're eating. Be careful. Don't cut right into it. Uh, make sure you remove the toothpick before you dig into it. So um, 
there you go. There's one Brajol roll. We're going to go ahead and uh, finish the rest of these off. Probably going to make about eight of them. And I'll come back in a little bit and show you how to sear these up. I have the beef rolls already made up. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to my pan, roughly about uh, maybe four to five tablespoons, just enough to coat the bottom of your pan, depending on the size. I'm going to try and get all these into one pan, and I'll show you, or I'll tell you what the benefit is there, is that then you can just add the sauce right on top of it. You don't have to worry about changing pans and that sort of stuff. So get the bottom coated with oil. Again, this is a uh, canola and olive oil blend. While, that's heat, while the oil is heating up, we're going to go ahead and season up our beef with salt and pepper one more time. Because remember, we seasoned up the inside, now we're going to season up the outside. Hit it with the salt. I go ahead and kind of roll these guys over so I get the other side. And, you know, it, I, I can stress seasoning enough here um, to the point that if we get this seasoned properly, we don't have to really season the dish at the end. Okay, so our pan's hot, our oil's hot. Now, when we drop our meat or our brujol into the pan, make sure you start off with the side where the meat folds over on top of each other. We're going to sear that side closed. We'll do that for all of these. You just, sometimes you got to find where the toothpick is or just kind of inspect your handiwork and see, all right, well, it folds over here. This will help out in the long run. And if you see, eight fit very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and let this sear and close up the meat on that one side. It'll probably be about three to four minutes per side. We'll then take that brujol, we'll roll it over, sear the next side, then roll it over, sear the next side, and then finally sear the fourth side. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like when we're almost ready to add our sauce. The brujol is nice and caramelized. We made sure it was brown on all the sides. We're now going to pour in our tomato sauce, which uh, we've used in a few different recipes. I'm just going to make sure there's enough of the sauce in the pan so that the brujol gets covered about halfway up. You don't have to completely submerge these, but you want them about a halfway up along to the side. And at that point, we're going to put the cover on the pan, put it in a 325 degree oven for roughly 45 minutes to an hour. After an hour of cooking in the oven at 325, we're going to remove the brujol. And being that it's ribeyes, you know they're already cooked and they're nice and tender. And if you uh, take a look at this, you'll see that there's a lot more liquid in the pan now. And what happens is as the beef, co beef cooks, it, ex it pushes out some of the water that's in the beef and then it sort of loosens up your sauce. So again, don't, don't overfill your pan with sauce when you begin because again, you're going to have more sauce when it's all done cooking. This is a real simple plate up. Just going to kind of grab some of the beef and some of the sauce. And um, what I like to do is I'll just garnish it with, again, with a little bit of oregano. Some of the stuff that we started off with. Grab a little bit more sauce as well out of the pan. And this would work fantastic with a little bit of pasta, uh, maybe a different type of vegetable as well, but it stands almost by itself as an entree. And there you go. Uh, my family's recipe with a little bit of a twist of uh, the traditional brujol, made simple from cooking from the cave. I'm Chef Pete Truzak and I will see you real soon.